Hey everyone, welcome to another video by Stock Trades. My name is Matt, and today we are going to look at the top performing gold stocks of 2020. However, before we get into that, just a reminder, we have a challenge right now. If we can get to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, we will be giving away free memberships to our Stock Trades premium platform. So don't forget, hit that subscribe button so that we can get to 10,000 subscribers and we can give away those free memberships. So with that in mind, let's get right to our top performing gold stacks of 2020. The gold industry has been one of the best on the TSX index. Not surprising, the price of gold itself is actually up by approximately 25% this year. Although it has corrected over the past couple months, the fundamentals remain to support a very strong gold price. This means that gold stocks should continue to do well. We've talked at length with our Stock Trades Premium members about the fundamentals that support gold prices and how to spot a very good gold stock. However, today we're not going to get into that. Today we're going to look at the top performing stocks of the year and the first up on our list is Kinross. Before we jump into analyzing Kinross, I just wanted to point out that we selected gold stocks that had a market cap of at least 500 million to start the year. Why do we do this? Because in a gold run, in a gold bull market, typically small and micro caps will outperform the large caps. And this list would have been dominated by those types of companies. However, we wanted to look at more so the mid to large cap companies. And that's why we, we took companies with a starting market cap of 500 million. The only senior producer to make our list was in fact Kinross. If you look at its chart, Kinross is up by approximately 50% this year, which is a very strong performance for a senior gold company. Kinross produces approximately 2.4 million ounces of gold a year and has a goal to reach 2.9 million ounces over the medium term. It has a peer leading exposure to gold prices, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And it has a very strong track record of meeting guidance. As you can see, the company has a very wide and diverse asset base. Approximately half of the company's production comes from the Americas, 21% uh, comes from Russia, and the remaining comes from West Africa, which is a very prolific gold area. What I find very impressive about Kinross is the fact that it continuously meets the company's guidance. You can see here that since 2012, it has met or exceeded guidance every single year. And this is in relation to production, cost, and capital expenditures. This is a very, very impressive track record. Not only that, it is on track to meet guidance in 2020, which considering COVID-19 and how the pandemic had led to several mine shutdowns, this is very, very impressive. As you can see, the company is expected to grow the production from 2.4 million ounces to 2.9 million ounces. Important to note that next year, the company's production is expected to be flat. So investors should temper their expectations for next year's performance. Moving forward, however, it is looking to see strong growth in both 2022 and 2023. Despite a flat production rate, Kinross is actually expected to grow its free cash flow year over year, and it has a very high free cash flow year versus its peers. This is a very attractive aspect of owning a gold stock. The higher the free cash flow yield, the better. Another interesting chart here is that Kinross is actually one of the highest leverage to gold. This means that gold accounts for nearly all of the company's production. You can see here the interesting breakdown between itself and, it, and its peers. Only Kirkland Lake Gold has higher exposure to gold. Finally, Another interesting chart to take a look at is a company's all in sustained costs, AISC. This is a very important metric in the gold industry and Kinross comes in approximately mid range compared to its peers. It is important to note that this is expected to drop over the coming years and Kinross reintroduces dividend this year as it expects to gen be generating strong cash flows. Kinross is an interesting play here. It is trading at a cheaper valuation than its peers. However, flat production profile through 2021 might be holding its back. Nevertheless, it has excelled in 2020. Moving on from Kinross, we are going to look at the second largest company on our list today, and that's Eldorado Gold. Eldorado Gold is a mid-tier company that has increased production at a pretty significant clip. Year to date, the company's stock price is up by approximately 57%, and it is, once again, one of the strongest performing gold stocks of the year. Interestingly, this is the second time that Eldorado Gold makes a top five performing stocks, it was also one of the best performing in 2019. If you look at this chart here, through November 8th, 2020, its share price has increased 290%. Um, and despite the company's significant increase in share price, 
it does remain attractively valued as compared to its peers. Using a price to NAV, which is net asset value, it still trades at a discount to its peers. If you look at the company's strong financial results, you'll see why the company has been one of the better performing stocks over the past couple of years. First, adjusted EBITDA has grown quite significantly quarter over quarter, as has cash generated from operating activities. Most importantly, however, is free cash flow. Free cash flow has skyrocketed in 2020, and this is in large part due to the company's growing production profile and lower all-in sustaining costs. Adjusted earnings has also increased pretty much quarter over quarter. And as you can see, over the past two years, the company has continued to set record results on, on an almost quarterly basis. This is the main driver behind the company's strong success over the past couple of years. Important to note, however, that is the past. And looking forward, the company's five-year operating outlook, you can see here that the company's production is actually supposed to drop in 2021. So the company is expected to exit 2020 with total production between 520 and 550 ounces of gold. However, that drops to only 420 to 450 ounces of gold in 2021. That's expected to remain pretty much flat uh, with some slight, slight increases in 2023 and 2024. So this to me means that the company's share price is trading at a discount likely because we are going to see decreased production next year and then production is going to be relatively flat over the next few years. So while Eldorado Gold has been a very, very strong play over the past couple of years, investors need to temper expectations. The company does have a lot of growth prospects in development. However, the company's current five-year outlook is for flat to slight growth. So don't expect a whole lot from the company over the next couple of years. That being said, at today's prices, the company is generating a ton of cash flow. And based on what I'm seeing, I would expect the company to issue a new dividend over the next couple of years. Next up on our list, we have the first explorer and development company, so not a producer, and that is Saul Gold. Saul Gold is the only non-producer to make the list. Not surprising, very few exploration and development companies actually have market caps above 500 million. So the fact that Saul Gold had a market cap above 500 million to begin with is a strong sign that the company is sitting on a pretty attractive asset base. As you can see, the company's stock price here is up by approximately 88% this year, a strong showing from the company. The investment thesis behind Saul Gold can be summarized in this particular slide. First, it has a first mover advantage in Ecuador um, in a very highly prospective mining jurisdiction. Uh, it owns the largest concessions in Ecuador. Um, as you can see here, it owns 76 concessions over 3,200 square kilometers. The company has built a strong relationship with the government and the local population. And it is also backed by several large industry players. Thus far, it has spent approximately $221 million on exploration. And the company does believe that it is fully funded with approximately $115 million US in the bank. Uh, recently, it received a $100 million injection from Franco Nevada as part of a royalty financing, financing deal. Speaking of the company's shareholders, here are the top shareholders in the company. Uh, so you see here BHP Billion owns 13.64% of the company. Newcrest um, owns another 13%. We also have the likes of DGR Global, Cornerstone Capital Resources, 10 Star Trading, BlackRock, which is one of the world's largest asset managers and I would argue one of the best. Um, and Samuel Holdings Group uh, also owns approximately 5% of the company. So it is backed by strong money, and this does not include Franco Nevada's uh, $100 million US financing, as mentioned earlier, uh, as that is tied to a streaming deal. With a company like Saul Gold, it's all about execution. The company claims to be fully funded with approximately just over 100 billion US in financing. However, there are some analysts that believe the company is going to run out of financing again in 2021. So it's something to keep an eye on. For a company like Saul Gold, it's all about execution. And the company is sitting on a flagship gold copper mine called Alpala. And this is the company's flagship project. As you can see here, the company has a very long time frame by which Alpala will see production. It is not expected to receive construction permitting until late 2021. And detailed engineering, mine development, and construction is expected to take place over the next few years. 
Commissioning of the mine isn't expected to take place until the first quarter of 2025, at which point a handover to operations will take place in late 2025. So you see here, this is a very long-term play. Don't expect the company to be producing anytime soon. Although Sol Gold is backed by many high quality industry players, this is still very much a long-term play. We'd expect considerable volatility over the next five years. Next up on our list is Taranga Gold. Taranga Gold is another company that operates in West Africa. As mentioned previously, West Africa is a highly prolific gold area and one that results in low cost and rising production. So Taranga Gold is focused on this area. Year to date, the company's stock price is up by approximately 100%, just shy, 96% if you will. And once again, this has been one of the best performing stocks on the TSX index for a couple of years. It has returned 397% over the past five years, 389% over the past three years, and 165% over the past year as of September 29th, 2020. So much like El Dorado, the company has been benefiting from stronger production and stronger reserves. The company has grown reverse from reserves from 1.4 million ounces in 2011 to 6.4 million ounces in 2019. That's a pretty significant jump. In terms of production, it expects to exit 2020 with 388,000 produced. And next year, we are going to see a big jump to approximately 522,000 ounces of gold. Although all in sustaining costs this year are pretty high, that's expected to drop in a meaningful way next year. In terms of reserves, you can see here that the company 6.4 million ounces is really at the mid range when compared to its mid production peers with Endeavor Mining being at the top with 10.4 million in reserves. Production is expected to jump to 500,000, which is a 40% increase year over year. And all in sustaining costs are expected to drop below $800 an ounce. So as mentioned previously, the company had all in sustaining costs above $1,000 per ounce, but that's expected to drop in a meaningful way next year to below $800 an ounce. So the investment thesis behind Taranga is pretty simple. The company has is expected to grow production in a meaningful way. Although it is expected to top out around 550,000 ounces, the company's cost profile below $800 an ounce is very attractive. This means that at the current gold price of $1,800 an ounce, the company is going to be printing cash. It will be generating a considerable amount of cash flow, which will likely enable it to not only grow its production profile organically, but likely to make further acquisitions down the road. Next, the top performing gold stock on our list is New Gold. New Gold is the top performing stock of the year, and it's actually the only one that has doubled in value, up by 140% this year. It's a very nice chart, and the company has been doing quite well. This is a company that is focused more so on North America, um, and it has, in particular, the Rainy River Gold Mine, which is an open pit and underground mine uh, located near Fort Francis. It also has the new Afton Copper Gold Mine, um, which is an underground cave mine in Kamloops. So why is the company doing so well? The company recently released its five-year operating outlook, which ends in 2025. Over this period, the company is expected to increase production by 26%, between end of 2020 through 2025 to approximately 550,000 ounces of gold. This is going to be led by the ramp up at Rainy River and the New Afton Sea Zone. Not only that, all in sustaining costs are expected to decrease year over year before eventually topping out at $800 per ounce in 2025. That's a very attractive cost profile and makes it one of the low cost producers in North America. In terms of financials, the company is expected to generate 1.5 billion in free cash flow over that period of time. That's quite attractive. Although it is based on an assumption that the long-term price of gold will be sitting at approximately $1,800 an ounce. In my opinion, this might be a little high, although we do think the fundamentals for gold do support a strong gold price. Many of the companies tend to forecast based on a lower gold price. So interesting to see that New Gold has chosen $1,800 an ounce as a long-term commodity pricing. Bottom line, this is a company that should be generating a ton of cash flow considering it is going to reach $800 per ounce in production costs. One interesting aspect of the company is its 
strategic agreement with the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan. The $300 million investment allowed it to strengthen the company's balance sheet um, and does provide it with significant pl flexibility. When you have the largest pension plan in the company on your side, it will allow you to raise cash and be able to be more financially flexible. Finally, it is one of the few companies that actually specifically states and talks about responsible mining. I say this because in our current environment, gold stocks, which are now generating record cash flow, are starting to become in the news for their environmental practices. So it's nice to see here that New Gold uses 90% recycled water across its operations. Um, it does conduct a climate risk assessment. Um, and tailing management is overseen by an independent review board. So all these things are important to note because as these gold stocks generate more and more cash, the environmentalists will begin to zero in on these companies and their operating practices. Nice to see New Gold here get a start on that. So New Gold is a top stock of the year with returns of 140%. While the company's outlook does look bright, I do question, however, the baseline that it's using. At $1,800 an ounce long term, although certainly doable, I would do like to see companies take a more conservative approach, which pretty much 90% of them do. So quite surprising to see New Gold use $1,800 an ounce as a starting point for their 2021 to 2025 financial outlook. Something to consider. If the company does meet guidance, that's likely one of the main reasons why. And with that, we're at the end of our video. Were you surprised by these five companies? I know I certainly was, although over the past couple of months, many companies have corrected, but I was still surprised that only one company with a market cap above 500 million ended up doubling in price. I thought there would be more given the strong price of gold. However, the past couple of months did see a correction, so I'm sure, I'm sure many of them dropped below this level because of this. That being said, we believe in the long-term fundamentals of gold. We think that gold makes for an excellent hedge in times of volatility, and in our opinion, having a certain percentage of your portfolio dedicated to gold is not a bad thing. It is, however, important to know which gold stocks to pick. And we do talk about that with our Stock Trades Premium members as to different criteria to be looking for when investing in gold stocks. As always, please comment below. This time, let us know what your favorite gold stock is heading into 2021. And as a final reminder, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Once we hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, we will be giving away free memberships to Stock Trades Premium. So thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more great Canadian content. Till next time.